Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Cliff London Uncentered. Of course, I am Cliff London. Gonna make this short today because my wife's talking all this crap about me making 20 minute long videos and everything. So today, what I want to talk about, first of all, hello everybody. I know I've been uh, out of the game for a little over a week, but as you know, I am a father-to-be and I have to do all those fatherly things been learning new words and everything like that have you guys ever heard the fucking word doula new shit i learned you know uh anyways what i want to talk about today is my new favorite ufc fighter by the name of colby covington hey cliff why is this guy your favorite and we don't care about mixed martial arts well i don't really care that much either but as a martial artist i'll watch a good fight anytime no matter what it is whether it be boxing whether it be some weird ass uh medieval sword fighting or some weird ass larpers kobe covington after whooping up on this dude i believe his name is tyron woodley Tyron Woodley is one of those simp-ass dudes that gets into the ring with all the Black Lives Matter. He had a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on. He had a Black Lives Matter shirt on. You know, it should have said Rioters Lives Matter or certain Black Lives Matter on this shit. But anyway, Kobe Covington whooped this dude's ass. Now, Kobe Covington should be your favorite UFC fighter as well because Kobe Covington supports the military uh, Kobe Covington is an American, and you know, and I don't think that he's racist uh, for his views. But the real reason why I started liking Kobe Covington probably like yesterday is because uh, in the post-fight interview, they uh, oh Tyron Woodley, the guy he was fighting, uh, uh, backed out of the fight, talking about his rib was hurt. And keep in mind, dude was getting his ass handed to him. So they asked uh, Mr. Covington about this in the post-game fight. And he says, almost as cool as when Han Solo said, when Princess Leia says, I love you. And he says, like a pimp, I know, before falling into the per, uh, the uh, 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 the permafrost or whatever they uh, call it. I can't think of it right now. Um, it was almost as good as that. He says, the Tyron Woolley guy, oh, he's a punk and a coward. Just like LeBron James. And it went on to ask him another question. He goes, yeah, he's a wimp. Just like LeBron James. And LeBron James, or should I say, LeCaron James. Thank you, Jeremy Prime from Geeks and Gamers. LeCaron James. Uh, they sh they gave a little clip of his response. And it was the most biggest oafish. Well, you know what I'm saying. Well, you gotta, oh, they say one thing. But when you get on the court or in the ring. And I'm like. Uh, LeBron James, you're, 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 you're a big dude, but you don't have a chance against a professional fighter. Okay? I, you know, and even, you know, Kobe Covington is not afraid of your big, long foot, ignorant, race baiting, hypocritical, shit talking ass. Fuck you, LeBron James. You'll never be Jordan. You're just a wannabe. Okay? Face it. And your fans that think you're all that, you know, they don't know shit either. But I will say this. Kobe Covington has your fucking number. LeCaron James, eat shit, you big Neanderthal moron. Fuck you. Next topic. I also, if the Bears suck this season, the second to eat up. If I have to not leave Bear fandom, but let's say that they begin to suck even though they're 2-0 and oh right now let's say they begin to suck and I go well I still want to watch football what other team do I like well that team would usually be the Chiefs because I was actually born in Kansas City um and you know I I, I like the Chiefs but you know I, I'm into intriguing stories you know I'm a former theater guy I, you know so I'm into intriguing stories Pittsburgh Steelers meet this need why must you say because in all this era of woke nonsense this radical left every guy in a tv show has to have a gay gayness to him putting gay on every fucking tv show you see which is okay i don't have anything against gay people but the problem is is their taste you know the way in which they do it they don't come up with a creative way because the idea of this thing is is you're supposed to you're supposed to care their whole thing is you're supposed to, they want you to care about the human being they want you to be accepted but they keep throwing uh, uh, the sex in your face, you know. If they were good writers, 
they'd wait a little while like they did in the wire with that one guy you know they got you in they sucked you into liking them as a person and then when they lowered that boom on you you know it really made you question yourself and that's what good entertainment does it provokes thought ask questions and takes one on an emotional journey but if you just throw it out there well you're kind of fucking shooting your own foot off you know because if you're trying to get those people and I know I've went off on a tangent a little bit here but if you're trying to get those people who are homophobic or who may not warm up to it or just can't plain handle it you need to write a character that they get behind then lower the bomb on you but those, these people don't think like that because they just think with their basically they think with their fucking private parts that's really what it is you know, anyway, back to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, so this is the only football team so far, so far, if there's other guys in the NFL that are following suit that are actually getting their head on straight, please let me know in the comments section. But so far, Maurice Pouncey, center for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and a man named, uh, I used to say Stephen Tuit, being from the fucking Midwest, but apparently it's Stefan Tuit, you know, he's like some Haitian or something like that. But, um, Stefan Tuit, uh, I want to say maybe last month or a few weeks ago, actually said, hey, I'm not into this kneeling, you know, uh, I came to this country, this country has given me so much, I refuse to kneel, and this dude is fucking, uh, you know, adjective speaking, this dude is, you know, darker than the inside of your asshole, okay, you can't tell this dude he ain't black, he's pretty close to it, like literally, literally, not being like literally is okay and he's huge so ain't nobody gonna get up in this dude's face all they had to say in response to stefan tui saying i'm not kneeling over this nonsense you know is they disappointed if he was a little wide receiver they'd probably be talking about get kicking his ass and stuff but you see this is how these people are anyway so stefan tui uh defensive end for the newly mighty pittsburgh steelers and uh maurice pouncey even better they picked this guy to go on the back of their helmets. I don't know if you guys out there, any of you watch football or watch sports or anything, but Alton Rose, I believe, and if I got it wrong, sue me because the guy was a piece of shit. But anyway, they just picked, the NFL just kind of picked these random black folk, these names, oh, wear this on the back of the helmet. Well, Maurice Pouncey took it upon himself to research who this guy really was, and as uh, more and more facts about the case came out, you know, he realized, oh, my God, we shouldn't be martyring uh, basically a criminal. And so he found a more suitable person taped over that bullshit guy's name who was straight up a gang member, by the way, you know, and put, I think it was a fallen black cop or soldier or someone who would deserve the, uh, uh, the homage, if you will. Uh, he did that. And to me, that really... That really spoke to me because it let me know, let someone like me know that I am not alone. A little bit about myself, you know, I I work with a lot of old school and, you know, and, and, and a few millennials that, you know, they have these views and they haven't really lived that much to see the aftermath. You know, they're caught up in this passion, Black Lives Matter, and this, that, and oh, they're writing for a reason, and their feelings, and it's just all really bullshit, because at the end of the day, when everyone forgets about these causes, ladies and gentlemen, I say this all the time, when the smoke clears, you're just going to have a desolate fucking ground zero of a neighborhood. Fast forward five years, they're going to be talking once again about how the white man don't want to invest in our neighborhoods, our neighborhoods are this, our neighborhoods are that. Now, of course, that's a bit of a, a general thing. Of course, people speak in generalities to save time. So, of course, every scenario is not like this. Okay, let's just put that out there right now. But, uh, see, I've lived long enough to go, well, I mean, hell, you don't even really have to live long enough. All you got to do nowadays is hit your phone and hit Rodney King or Reginald Denny, and you could see the result. You know, that place never recovered. You know, it's a, it's a dead horse. You know, they keep worshiping these criminals and these thugs and you know a lot of the millennials and stuff i work with go they say well does it matter it's like well no no one none of us as human beings have the right to decide if they live or die but usually if you're doing shady and fucked up shit if you're a drug dealer well that's going to bring cops around you i'll say it once i say it again uh i love this country 
and I'm not going to even sit up here and act like it's a racist country, but there are some systems and some ways of being. It's like anything else. People get set in their ways. So there are some things and rules and things that are um, that need to be reformed for, you know, but these things work against whites and blacks and everybody. In general, the, there, there's a, a privatization of prisons and stuff. There needs to be a change in that because uh, the way they're set up now, they're paid to make better criminals. They, it's better off for them, the, the more fucked up you are if you come back. And in my opinion, that's a problem for everybody, not just blacks, but for anybody. You know, what if you go in for too many fucking parking tickets? You know, you come out and all of a sudden you're a fucking murderer. I mean, it's crazy. So there does need to be some reform in some shape or form. But at the same time, with that being said, there is light. There is beauty in the world because little by little, though I work with uh, millennials who just refuse, they, they really want to believe that every situation that, that, you know, just as bad as everyone that wants to defend the police. There's a whole slew of people that want to turn the, turn everyone into a martyr. Now, Breonna Taylor, hey, I saw uh, a young woman that was in love with a shitty ass dude. And I very seriously would really like to see the uh, tape. I want to know why he didn't, his big ass didn't get shot at all. And again, there is nothing correct about what that situation and what the cops did and how it was handled. There's nothing correct about it. However, he dude did shoot through the door. <laughs> Sometimes just fucking practical shit is practical shit and you have to see it for what it was. I just feel like Breonna Taylor got caught up in, uh, fell in love with a guy and to me it just looked like a this kind of a movie scene. You know, she was probably telling him and begging and pleading with him like, you know, you got to get out of the life. And I bet that he kept her around with promises of going straight, you know, maybe even wasn't being honest with her about uh, how much he was still in. Because from what I understand, she was uh, on her way up in the world. And usually when that happens, you know, women find it real easy to let go of the scraps and say, hey, this ain't I, I love you, but this ain't working. You know, you're going to drag me down. So, you know. uh when other people come out and they paint this, you know, the dude, yeah, he can go to hell. But the young lady, I just kind of feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, they're not really finding nothing. They're trying to say, oh, well, she wasn't that she was that. But the, to me, that just sounds like maybe, you know, when they talk about her in and out of school, you know, that probably had some shit to do with him or the ex. You know, maybe she was one of those weirdos that uh, are into thugs, regardless of the fact that it doesn't make you um, a criminal or deserve what happened. So. I'm just going to say uh, rest in peace uh, to Miss Taylor. I, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I'm sorry that your life was uh, snuffed out way too soon. It's a very terrible thing. And I hope uh, your family can find peace through it some way. And I hope that uh, people don't exploit your death for sneakers and flat screen TVs. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to go sit on uh, the couch with my huge wife. She's like, whoa, like huge. And there's actually like movement and stuff. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I've already named my son. You tell me what you think. The name is Marlo Anakin King. I think that shit's pretty cool myself. Uh, regardless, it's it's going to stick anyway because she came up with a bunch of shit names that'll get them picked on throughout school all the time. But it's good to be back, everybody. Remember, check out that Kobe Covington interview. Pittsburgh Steelers should be your next, your, your second team if you give a fuck about football. Uh, with that being said, just remember... Fuck Black Lives Matter. They're Marxist. LeBron James is a fucking Sasquatch idiot. He's not a real champion because he fucking joined a super team and stole championships and lost one year. So he fucking is not Jordan. There is no fate. But what we make for ourselves. I'm Cliff London. Good morning, everybody. But for me, good night.